talk more about uh, the implications of a drought, why it's been declared and what it means for us all. Joining us is Tom Oliver, Professor of Applied Ecology at the University of Reading. So um, uh, beyond the colloquial definition, what, what, does this, what does this mean for us? So uh, obviously drought is about uh, a shortage of water, but there are actually different types of drought. Um, there's a meteorological drought, so this is less than average rainfall. I mean, uh, in southern England, we've had over 150 days with little or no rain. In July and August, that's been particularly severe with less than 10% of what we'd normally have. That, of course, means less water going into the ecosystem. So we get a hydrological drought. So that's a lack of water in our soils, in our groundwater, in aquifers, and in rivers and lakes. Uh, that leads to impacts on us. And this is where it comes to the third definition of drought, which is an agricultural drought. So that's significant negative impacts on crops. Um, we've seen images of crops burning in fields. Uh, but even before that, there's wilting effects um, affecting, um, for example, potatoes, maybe 50% of our potato crop not able to be um, uh, yielding, as well as um, even staple crops uh, like maize, which we normally expect to be drought tolerant suffering. There's also impacts on ecosystems. So the final definition of drought is our ecological drought. So when we're getting water drying up in those, uh, for example, in the chalk streams, fish, mollusks are left high and dry. Even before the, the water goes completely, uh, we get uh, the concentration of, of toxins. So nutrients flowing in, high temperatures lead to algal growth. That's very toxic for the fish there. So that creates um, you know, loss of wildlife populations there. On land, even insect populations really don't like these very prolonged dry conditions we've been having. So insect populations decline, especially where we've got uh, habitats are degraded or lost. That means knock on effects. So birds that would eat those insects, you know, like you know, blackbirds in our garden it will suffer and bats as well. So a whole cascade of effects on our ecosystems. Mm. And of those four droughts, um, it makes it simple because in Southern England, we've got all four at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of how quickly we can get out of a, a drought situation, I mean, what, what are we looking at? Do we need rainfall in the next couple of weeks? Do we need rainfall in the next couple of months? And, and, and how much would be enough for them to lift that drought warning? Well, in some of these areas where the, the rivers are, are recharged from groundwater, it could be significant amounts of rain needed. Um, so uh, if we have a, a drier winter, then there may still be drought conditions in, in the spring if, if we have a very dry spring. So it's, it's hard to predict. I mean, we are expected to get some, some rain in the future. One thing that makes things worse is the way we abstract water. We take water out of those rivers. So um, uh, the Environment Agency estimates that 28% of, of groundwater sources, so that's the underground aquifers, are being used unsustainably. And around 10 to 20% of rivers, we're taking water out of them. So that obviously that has a, a big negative impact on the wildlife. We're also leaking water. Over 3 billion litres of water a day are lost from England and Wales. So, um, you know, our water infrastructure system, is, it, climate change wasn't a surprise. We know it's coming, but we haven't responded effectively. And, um, you know, the system, uh, we can talk about private public ownership, people have opinions, but from an agricultural and ecological perspective, the water infrastructure system is broken. Uh, it's creaking, it's leaking, and it's not fit for dealing with, with climate warming. Okay, uh, Tom Oliver, Professor of Applied Ecology, thanks for uh, speaking to us here on BBC News.